If I told you that what you eat could actually help slow down the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, would you believe me? Well, stick around because today we're talking about five essential vitamins that real research shows can make a real difference in managing Parkinson's. And here's the thing, most people with Parkinson's have no idea that their kitchen might already hold some of the answers they've been looking for. You know, I've seen so many people struggling with Parkinson's focus only on their medications, but they completely overlook one of the most powerful tools they have, which is nutrition. And that's exactly what we're fixing today. Let's start with number one, and this one is absolutely crucial. Vitamin B6, also known as pyridoxine. Here's why B6 is so important for Parkinson's patients. Your brain is using dopamine every single day. That's the neurotransmitter that Parkinson's affects. And B6 plays a critical role in how your body produces and regulates dopamine. When your B6 levels are low, this process doesn't work as smoothly as it should. Now here's something interesting. If you're taking certain Parkinson's medications, particularly the ones containing levodopa, you need to pay special attention to your B6 intake. Some older studies suggested you should avoid B6, but more recent research shows that's not quite accurate. What matters is the timing and the amount. The key is working with your doctor to make sure your levels are balanced. Where do you find B6? Chickpeas are absolutely loaded with it. Then you have salmon, which gives you B6 plus a bunch of other benefits. Potatoes, both sweet and regular, are great sources. And if you're a breakfast person, fortified cereals contain plenty of B6. Even bananas have a decent amount. What about chicken? Chicken breast is actually an excellent source of B6. Turkey, too. And if you like beef, lean beef provides B6 as well. The recommended daily amount for adults over 50 is about 1.5 milligrams for women and 1.7 for men. But again, if you're on levodopa medication, you'll want to check with your doctor about what's right for your specific situation. Here's something practical. If you're trying to get more B6 into your diet, consider making a simple meal like grilled salmon with a side of roasted sweet potatoes. That one meal gives you a solid dose of B6 plus other nutrients your brain needs. Or if you prefer something simpler, a bowl of fortified cereal with a banana and some milk covers your B6 needs for the day. Now let's move to number two, and this one surprised a lot of people. Vitamin D. People don't realize how common vitamin D deficiency is in Parkinson's patients. In fact, studies show that people with Parkinson's tend to have lower vitamin D levels than people without the disease. And that's a problem because vitamin D does so much more than just help with bone health. Vitamin D plays a role in brain function. It helps regulate calcium, which your neurons need. And there's emerging research suggesting that vitamin D might help protect those dopamine-producing cells in your brain. When your D levels are too low, you're basically leaving your brain without one of its protective tools. The challenge with vitamin D is that you can't get enough just from food alone. Your body actually makes vitamin D when your skin is exposed to sunlight. So if you're spending a lot of time indoors, which many Parkinson's patients do, you're probably not making enough. And here's something to consider. If you're in northern parts of the United States, during winter months, the sun isn't strong enough to trigger vitamin D production at all. Food sources include fatty fish like salmon and mackerel, egg yolks have some, mushrooms that have been exposed to sunlight have vitamin D, some fortified milk and plant-based alternatives have it too. Herring and sardines are incredibly rich in vitamin D, and they're affordable too. Cod liver oil, if you can stomach it, is packed with D. Most experts recommend that people over 50 aim for at least 600 to 800 international units daily. But many people with Parkinson's benefit from higher amounts. This is definitely something to discuss with your health care provider. A simple blood test can show where you stand, and they can recommend the right dose for you. Here's what I've observed with many of my patients. Getting vitamin D from food alone is really difficult. Most people end up needing a supplement, especially if they live somewhere with limited sunlight or if they're not able to get outside regularly. And that's completely okay. 
there's no shame in taking a vitamin D supplement. Sometimes your situation requires it. All right, number three is fascinating, and you probably haven't heard much about it. Coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. CoQ10 is this powerful antioxidant that your cells actually produce naturally. Your mitochondria, which are like the power plants of your cells, they use CoQ10 to generate energy. And here's the critical part. In Parkinson's disease, those mitochondria aren't working as well as they should be. When researchers have studied CoQ10 in Parkinson's patients, they found that it might help slow the progression of symptoms. The theory is that by boosting mitochondrial function, you're giving those vulnerable dopamine cells a better chance to survive. It's like giving your brain cells the fuel they need to keep fighting. Here's something that makes CoQ10 special. Your body does make it on its own, but as you get older, the amount your body produces actually goes down. By the time you're in your 60s and 70s, you're making significantly less than you did when you were younger. Add Parkinson's to the mix and your cells are making even less. Where do you find it? Fatty fish are one of the best sources. Organ meats like liver have high amounts, though I know that's not everyone's favorite. Nuts and seeds, especially pistachios and sesame seeds, have CoQ10. Whole grains have it too. Spinach and broccoli contain it as well. Peanuts have some. Even beef and pork contain CoQ10, especially if you choose the fattier cuts. The interesting thing about CoQ10 is that it's fat-soluble, which means your body absorbs it better when you eat it with some healthy fat. So that salmon with olive oil dressing, that's actually perfect for getting CoQ10 into your system effectively. Having a handful of almonds with some water, add some avocado or olive oil to your meal, and you're maximizing what your body can actually use. For Parkinson's patients specifically, studies have used doses ranging from 300 to 1200 milligrams daily. That's higher than what the average person might need. Your doctor can help determine what makes sense for you. Many people find that they feel more energy and have fewer symptoms when they're getting adequate CoQ10. Now we get to number four, and this affects your daily life more than you might realize. Vitamin B12. Your brain uses B12 for something really important. It helps maintain the coating around your nerve cells and it supports your neurotransmitters. When you have Parkinson's, your nervous system is already under stress, so making sure you have adequate B12 is essential. Here's the problem though. As you get older, it becomes harder for your body to absorb B12 from food. Many people over 50 actually don't absorb B12 efficiently from regular foods anymore. And if you're taking certain medications, including some common ones for stomach issues, that makes B12 absorption even worse. B12 deficiency can actually make Parkinson's symptoms feel worse. It can contribute to fatigue, brain fog, and even balance problems. Have you noticed your energy levels aren't what they used to be? Well, B12 deficiency could be part of that picture. Some people describe it as feeling foggy or like their thinking isn't as sharp. Others notice they're more tired than usual. Where do you find B12? It's primarily in animal products. Beef and other red meat have it. Fish, especially salmon and trout, are excellent sources. Dairy products like milk and cheese. Eggs. Even nutritional yeast has B12 if you're vegetarian or vegan. Clams and oysters are actually some of the richest sources of B12 you can find. Lamb has B12. Even processed deli meats have B12, though you might want to go for fresher options when possible. The recommended amount for adults is 2.4 micrograms daily. But here's where it gets interesting. Many people over 60 actually benefit from getting B12 from fortified foods or supplements because their bodies simply don't absorb it well from regular food anymore. Some people with Parkinson's find that B12 injections work better than oral supplements because they bypass the absorption problem entirely. This is something worth discussing with your doctor. A blood test can show your B12 status and they can recommend whether you need supplementation and in what form. Some people get monthly injections. Others take high-dose oral supplements. What works best really depends on your individual situation. And finally, number five, which might be the most overlooked one of all. Vitamin E. 
Vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant. Your brain is especially vulnerable to something called oxidative stress, and in Parkinson's disease, this stress is significantly elevated. Vitamin E helps protect your brain cells from this damage. Now, I want to be clear about something. Vitamin E alone isn't a cure or a prevention for Parkinson's. But when it works together with other vitamins and a healthy lifestyle, it becomes part of a stronger defense system for your brain. What's interesting is that vitamin E isn't just one thing. It's actually a group of compounds, and different food sources have different types. That's why variety matters so much. You're not just getting one form of vitamin E, you're getting multiple forms that work together. Where do you find vitamin E? Nuts are absolutely packed with it. Almonds, hazelnuts, sunflower seeds, all exceptional sources. Vegetable oils like sunflower oil and safflower oil have it. Spinach and other dark leafy greens have good amounts. Avocado has vitamin E. Whole grains contain it too. Kiwi fruit is loaded with E. Olives and olive oil have it. Even canola oil contains vitamin E. The recommended daily amount for adults is 15 milligrams. That's actually pretty achievable through food if you're eating a varied diet with nuts and healthy oils and greens. A small handful of almonds gives you about 7 milligrams of vitamin E, so you're already getting close to half your daily need with just a snack. One thing to know about vitamin E is that it works better when you're getting adequate vitamin C as well. They kind of team up together to protect your cells. So, eating citrus fruits, berries, and bell peppers along with your other vitamin E sources makes everything work more efficiently. Your body is actually quite smart about this. When you give it the raw materials it needs, it knows how to use them. Now, here's something really important that ties all of this together. These vitamins don't work in isolation. They work as a system. Your body is incredibly complex, and all these nutrients interact with each other. That's why I always emphasize that you can't just take one supplement and expect magic results. But when you create an overall nutritional pattern that includes these vitamins, you're giving your brain and your body the best chance to manage Parkinson's symptoms effectively. You're working with what you're already taking from a medication perspective, and you're adding nutritional support on top of that. Think of it this way. Your Parkinson's medications are handling the neurological aspects, right? They're trying to maintain dopamine levels and manage symptoms. But your nutrition is working at a cellular level. It's protecting your cells, giving them energy, supporting their function. When you combine both approaches, you're attacking the problem from two different angles. Let's talk about putting this into practice, because that's really where it matters. First, get a baseline. Talk to your doctor about getting blood work done to see where you stand with these vitamins. Maybe you're deficient in B12, but your D levels are fine. Maybe your B6 is where it should be. Everyone is different, and that's exactly why personalized assessment matters. Second, don't try to overhaul everything at once. Start with one or two changes. Maybe you add more salmon to your diet. Maybe you start having a handful of almonds as a snack. Small changes that stick are better than big changes you abandon after two weeks. If salmon seems expensive or you're not a fish person, that's fine. You can get many of these vitamins from other sources. The key is finding foods you actually enjoy eating, because you're way more likely to stick with a nutrition plan when you enjoy the food. Third, be patient. These vitamins are supporting your brain's health and function, but that takes time. You're not going to feel different tomorrow. But over weeks and months, when you're consistent with good nutrition, you will notice differences. Maybe your tremor is a little less pronounced. Maybe your energy is better. Maybe your thinking is clearer. Maybe you have fewer brain fog episodes. These changes add up. I've worked with patients who made these dietary changes, and while every person is different, many report that after three to six months of consistent effort, they feel noticeably better. Some say their energy improved. Others notice their symptoms weren't progressing as quickly. Some say their mood is better. It all matters. Fourth, keep working with your healthcare team.
your neurologist or doctor needs to know what supplements you're taking. Some supplements can interact with medications, and you want to make sure everything you're doing is working together, not against each other. This is important. One more thing I want to mention, because this really matters. The quality of your food sources matters. Fresh vegetables, real fish, actual nuts, whole grains, these whole foods deliver not just the vitamins we talked about, but hundreds of other compounds that work together to support your health. When you're choosing between a handful of almonds versus an almond-flavored snack food, the almonds are going to give you so much more benefit. Your body was designed to eat real food, and when you give it real food, it responds. You'll notice the difference. I also want to address something real here. I know that living with Parkinson's is challenging. Some days are harder than others, and I'm not suggesting that eating the right foods is going to make it go away. But what I am saying is that you have more control over your health than you might think. These choices, day after day after day, they matter. They add up. They make a difference. Here's a simple action plan you can start today. Pick one meal this week and make it count. If it's breakfast, add an egg and a banana. That gives you B6 and some B12. If it's lunch, have some salmon with vegetables. That covers your CoQ10, B6, D, and E. If it's a snack, grab a handful of almonds. You've got vitamin E and CoQ10 right there. Don't stress about being perfect. Just try to make one good choice a day. That's enough to get started. Keep a simple note on your phone or in a journal about how you're feeling, energy levels, how your symptoms are, your mood, sleep quality. After a month, you'll be able to look back and see if you've noticed any changes. Most people find that this simple tracking helps them stay motivated. If you're watching this and you have Parkinson's or someone you love has Parkinson's, what's been your experience with nutrition? Have you noticed that certain foods help you feel better? Leave a comment below because I really do read them, and hearing from people like you helps me create better content. And if you found this information helpful, please share it with someone who needs to hear it. That really does help this channel grow, and it helps more people get the information they need to live well with Parkinson's. Your health is worth the effort. Start today with one small change. Your brain will thank you for it.